Right guys, so I'm going to let you in on something here today that I can guarantee that you've not heard before. I can guarantee it. And this is the first place that you're going to hear it. And I can promise, I can assure and I can guarantee that if you stay till the end and you apply what I mentioned in the video, it is fundamentally impossible that your trading cannot improve. It's impossible. And if it doesn't improve, after at least a month to three months of application of what I'm about to tell you in this video, you can come back in this video and you can put it in the comments and you can expose me. Because if what I give you doesn't work, I'm a fraud and I'm a fake. I'll put that out there, clear as daylight. Let me begin by this. A lot of people, and I've sat with some extremely high level professional traders outside of our ecosystem, futures traders, options traders, stocks, FX. I've been to dinners with these people and their emotional intelligence is on a different playing field that you can even imagine. Way beyond what you can imagine, way beyond what you can comprehend. And when I first came across this, I did more digging into this. Right, and I figured out my answer is not in the markets. I knew what I needed to know. And this is a question to every single one of you. How many more accounts are you gonna fail? How many more accounts are you gonna lose money on? How much more competency are you gonna bleed? How many more systems are you gonna try? How many more mentors are you gonna learn from? How much are you gonna keep refining and refining and refining before you actually get profitable? You've been trying it for so long, yet you're still not seeing a penny from your craft. And it's frustrating. I was literally there and I'm not saying this to sugarcoat things or to make you feel like I relate to you. I'm not trying to do no sneaky tactic here. I'm just fed up of seeing people lead themselves astray because they're listening to absolute muppets who have no idea what they're talking about. And I'm sick of it. What's important to understand in this video? Now this is putting aside, this is very important that you listen to this part fundamentally. This is putting aside that you know what you need to know in order to become profitable. Really understand that. This is putting aside that you know what you need to know in order to become profitable. What do I mean by that? Every single one of you watching this, you can test this right now. Go and choose any instrument in any market that you like. Go back to two years from the time that you're watching this video. Rewind two years and just test it, back test it, okay? Now I've done a separate video on back testing. A link to that is in the description, but go and back test that anyway. And I want you to see, can you acquire positive results over two years? of doing so. Can you do that? So pause this video and go and do that now and then come back to it. Once you've done that and you can see that you, you can actually acquire positive results from testing any instrument in any market of your choice, you have proven to yourself that you know what you need to know from a technical standpoint to achieve profitability to whatever degree that is, which improves with the proper and the right experience and the right seasoning in the markets. So if you know what you need to know, from a standpoint of technicals, why can you not replicate, I'm not meaning to the exact same amount of course, but give or take that same performance in the live markets? How much more ignorance are you gonna place on this matter and this issue before you realize that the answer is in here, the reason you can't replicate that performance in the live markets to any degree near to that is because your emotional state has not actually been worked on in the slightest because if it did, you'd be able to compose yourself in the moment and it wouldn't be your psychology doing the trading for you. Your negative psychology, let's just state it as that for now. So you don't realize this guys, it's your psychology doing the trading for you in the markets, whether you like it or not. It's either gonna be positive psychology or negative psychology. That is the facts of it. In the end, that is the driving factor of all your decisions. So let me make something extremely clear now and really listen to this part now. This is very important, crucially important. And I can guarantee that if you actually apply this and you listen to this properly, watch how your trading changes. Isn't it common sense and don't you ever think it's logical to ask yourself, where do all of the trades that you take or you don't take, like how does that actually occur? How do you choose whether to stay out of a trade or get involved in a trade? It's something called decisions. So your decision making ability determines whether you get involved in a trade or whether you stay out of a trade. Correct? Correct. So if your decisions are the anchor point by which you get involved or stay out of the market, meaning whether you either make money or you lose money, wouldn't it be common sense to ask where your decisions stem from? Well, they stem from something called your brain, which every single one of you hopefully have. Now your brain is split into two hemispheres, your left and your right. Just two hemispheres, not three, not four, not five, two, very simple. These are what I like to call two decision-making faculties. Now remember, your left brain, your left side, your left hemisphere is in charge of rationalizing. 
is in charge of making logic of things, finding reason and truth in whatever it is. Your right brain, your more powerful side, your limbic system, your emotional system is in charge of helping you survive, maintaining emotions, these kind of things, bringing forth the right emotions so you can take the right actions to take care of a threat or to run away from a threat. That's what it's designed to do. Your right brain will command your left brain and your left brain will go out and find reasoning to justify the command. Very important to understand this as a trader because you're either of two traders now. You're either somebody who hesitates or you're somebody who's very impulsive. I was personally a very impulsive trader. What I didn't realize is why is it that I keep getting involved in trades that in hindsight I keep regretting and I know I shouldn't be taking them, but I take them anyway. Why is that? And I kept trying to find my answer in the market and it wasn't there, but the market was speaking to me, which I'm going to talk about in this sheet in a second. And it was my ignorance, just the same way some of you might be ignorant right now. I was very ignorant. I wasn't interpreting the message from the market correctly. And what the market taught me is that the trade is not showing itself as the trade. It's showing itself as a reflection of my biases, my beliefs, my programming, my emotions and thoughts. All these things combined together in one pot. See it as different paint colours. And imagine you get a brush and you mix them all together and you paint something with it. And you paint a trade with it. The trade that you see is painted with your biases, your beliefs, your programming, your perception, and all these kind of different things. It's all one potion. Now a lot of you have either got negative versions of these or positive versions of these. Again, the majority of you have negative versions of these because you've not worked on your mind. Now, what's very important to understand here is this. What you see on the market is a reflection of all those things. So if I'm an impulsive trader, all I'm seeing on the screen is a reflection of my inner world. If you don't work on this, that's never going to change for a fact. So what you're seeing on the screen and two traders are going to see it differently. The impulsive trader will see an opportunity or perceive an opportunity as an opportunity to make money. They'll never look at it as an opportunity to lose money. Why is that? Because they're stuck in a bias. Where does that bias stem from? Right? This is the this is the psychology that you gotta go down. You've got to reverse engineer all of this. For someone who's hesitating trader, they're always gonna see an opportunity as an opportunity to lose money. Whereas all they need to do is they need to hedge that. They need to turn it around and think, well, Yes, this could be an opportunity to lose money, but it could also be an opportunity to make money as well. Myself, what did I do? I was like, okay, every trade that I'm seeing, yes, if it's the plan, which doesn't mean it's worth taking, and I've done separate videos on this, and I'm justifying the trade. Why? Because I'm seeing every trade that shapes up, I'm perceiving it as an opportunity to make money. But why am I not looking at the latter? Why am I not looking at the opposite, that it could also lose me money? Even though I tell myself all the time, yeah, I know I accept the risk and all these things. All bullshit. I would convince myself I did. But really, my, my mind was gravitating with this magnetic force towards what if the trade makes money? So why did I have that bias present? Because I'd valued money too much. Why did I value money too much? Upbringing, beliefs, programming, image, self-image, okay? Very important and we talk so heavily in Rewired about this. You guys have no idea in the world what you're missing out on. Absolutely no idea at all. I have gone through so much psychological content, I cannot even explain to you. If you guys were to even fathom or come close to how much content I've gone through and how much of it was useless and irrelevant, I can't even express it to you. In nowhere, none of the content that I've been through, whether it's Douglas's work, whether it's Brett Steenbarger's, whether it's Randy Howell's work, which are all, by the way, I'm not taking away from them, fantastic content that they've got. But there's no practical information as to how to rewire your mind in a set chronological way in an ordered fashion that applies to everybody. So as great as their work is, there's no practical solution. There's a lot of, okay, this is what's wrong. That's what's wrong. This is why you think the way that you do. This is how you should think. It's telling you what you should do and why things are the way that they are, but it's not actually giving you actionable steps to achieve that. We've spoken about this in a lot of detail and rewired. So all of this comes back to image, my image of how I viewed myself. I viewed myself as someone who'd feel more powerful if I had more money because money is power, which is the truth. But what is the point of having that power? if you can't handle the responsibility of increased power. And how can you handle the responsibility of increased power? Discipline, daily action. Remember, let me give you guys an analogy really quick. Imagine if you're chasing a cat and you're running after it, it's gonna run away. How is the cat gonna come closer to you if you're running after it? The cat represents your goals. So what's gonna happen here is if you stay rooted and you stay firm and you become a person who's got this magnetic energy where the cat comes towards you, not going to be a problem now is it your goals are the same way 
If you start running after these things and you put them on a pedestal, you're saying that they're higher than you, which means you're not the person you need to be or deserve to be to actually achieve them and attract them into your life. This is why we say you've got to be the person before you are the person. It's all about self-image. Write down all of the traits, all of the personality traits. Write down all of the habits that the multi-millionaire, wealthy version of you will have. I'm not talking about, oh, but when I'm that person, I'll have businesses. No, write down what personality traits and habits that the multi-millionaire, wealthy version of you will have. These are all free. Habits and personality traits are free. Write them down. I remember at the time I had 18 of them that I'd written down and I was only embodying three of them. How can I expect those goals that this wealthy multi-millionaire individual version of me is gonna have achieved in his life to actually come to me if I'm not embodying 18 out of 18 of those traits and I'm only doing three? Do you think the universe is gonna find you a deserving person, a deserving trader? If you're only embodying 10% of what you need to be embodying, how is the cat gonna to come towards you if it hates you? If you're not the kind of person the cat wants to be around? Remember your goals are just like the cat. Don't run after them. Instead, be the person that you need to be and they will come into your life with the correct work. Remember the law of attraction doesn't work if you don't work. So the little scribble part that I've got on represents the trading glass. And as you can see right at the back is the trade. So there's the trade that presents itself, but then there's an extended version of what you see. And what you see is a reflection of the very things that I mentioned before that are either positive or negative. And for 99% of you, they're negative. And they're always gonna show up as a reflection of your inside world. So until you unwire all of the negative beliefs, all of the negative programming, just like I just mentioned now with the image, until you unwire all of that and then rewire it, you're always gonna see the trades as of what you're thinking in your mind at that moment, which is mostly emotionally driven. And you do not realize this, still ignorant to it. This is why you're still blowing money on funded accounts. This is why you're still bleeding your capital and your confidence and you're getting advice from the wrong people. I am absolutely fed up of this, hence why I'm making this video. There are so many misinterpretations out there of what it requires to be a successful trader. People telling you nonsense like, track your strike rate or follow your trading plan. No, don't track strike rate, it's pointless. Follow your trading plan well, not just following it blindly. Don't back test because it's not gonna give you any confidence at all. I've done videos on this. Go back and watch, this is very important. And I do not come out and say these things if I haven't got full experience with it, along with 90 to 100 other students that I've coached that are proof of this, and I've got data on this. So I've got actual experience on what I'm talking about here. Otherwise I won't come out and say this, and I'm not saying this from a point of arrogance. I'm saying this from a point of passion and also frustration at the same time, because people have been led astray. You will make more money guaranteed doing what I've mentioned in this video than you would trying to find an answer in technicals in the charts or trying to change your system, trying to refine this or refine that. I'm all for refinements, but they've got to be the right refinements. And if you've been refining these things for so long, then clearly your refinements ain't working. So you've got to refine other things in your mind and change cogs in your mind that have never been changed. They've gone rusty because you never bloody use them. Remember, which one are you? Are you a trader that's very impulsive? Are you a trader that's very, uh, that you hesitate a lot? Which one are you? Figure that out first of all. Once you've got that, what you want to do, and we talk about all of this in Rewired, again, I'm not gonna give this all away here for free. Write down and track the common thought patterns that you have before you make a decision that you regret. Whether that's a decision to stay out of a trade that you should have got involved in, or whether that's a decision to get into a trade that you should have stayed out of. So replay that again and really understand that. That's what we categorize as a regretful circumstance. You need to figure out what exact thoughts that you're having before you come into those regretful circumstances that are losing you money. So once you've figured out the common thought patterns that you're having, all you want to do next is once you've figured out what those common thought patterns are, because remember thoughts lead to the generation of emotions. Emotions have an electrical charge. They generate certain actions. So they motivate you to take certain actions. The same way if somebody annoys you, you start thinking things, then you start to feel emotions of anger, then you take an action out of anger. And this is a common repeated cycle. This is why you're still repeating the same exact reality. You're experiencing the same thing again. You're still experiencing losing. You're still experiencing losing accounts, losing your confidence and all of it, like I mentioned, because the thoughts have not changed. This is not rocket science. Please get this into your head. So you figure out what those common thought patterns are. The next time that they initiate before you take a trade, you know, as a trader who deals in probabilities, as you say, from a probabilistic standpoint, those thoughts are expensive to have because they cost you money, they cost you pain, and all these kind of different things as well that you don't want to experience. Your brain has to form new neural circuitry around this to help you survive from emotional pain of some kind. And you have to train it to do that. 
You have to bring the intangible, i.e. the thoughts, into the tangible medium on paper, the right thoughts, and do this post-trade. Do never write this down pre-trade. The mistake a lot of you make is you write down how you feel before you take a trade, but you don't understand the brain and how it works. Whatever you write down before you take a trade is going to be biased. You're gonna tell yourself that you're feeling calm. You're gonna tell yourself that you're feeling probabilistic, you're neutral and all this absolute BS. It's all bias driven. Once the bias has eliminated and disintegrated after the trade outcome is completed, whether it's a loss most of the time, which it will be, then you will see things for what they are. Then you write down exactly how you were thinking before the trade, what dialogue you were having, what your body's physical state was like. We talk about this in Rewired and we call it error thoughts. There's so much more coming for 2.0. We're developing so many different things. I'm telling you now, you guys don't understand what you're missing out on. You'll sleep on it because, oh, it's eight, 900 pound or a thousand pound, which is going up by the way on March the 1st, very, very soon by the time you see this video and even more in the future when we add more things in to help make you more money, which is extremely clear. The results are in the numbers. Every single person who's taken Rewired has improved the trading. Every single person. We've got data and stats to prove that people who took Rewired on our own in-house prop firm, accelerated their trading. We've got numbers to show that. Multiple people, it's not a fluke. So there is a clear, tangible source of information here that you are missing out on. And you don't realize it because you're ignorant. So we talk about that in Rewired. We're gonna have all these things developed. And like I said, you will spend happily eight to 900 pound to a thousand pound on one single assessment just to fail it. And you'll do that again and again and again. How many of you are in debt by four or 5,000 pounds of dollars? doing these silly assessments when you've not sat for once, relaxed yourself and thought, you know what, maybe there's something else I need to work up on. But what have you been sold on? You've been sold on when you get knocked down, get right back up. It's the worst advice possible. When you get knocked down, stay down. Understand why you're down in the first place. Self-assess. So you get back up the different person and you're not a headless chicken. So we speak about all these things, like I said, we call them error thoughts, okay? And there's a specific way that you can bring about awareness to these that we talk about very in depth in Rewired. I say we, of course, Mark's talked about this very heavily in Rewired himself as he filmed it and he actually built it himself. Um, so he speaks about that, okay? Now, if you don't have awareness to these things, how are they ever gonna change? That's just like having the engine management light or the oil light coming on in your car and you're simply putting duct tape over it. What's gonna happen? Eventually the car's gonna get even worse and you're gonna have to obviously spend more money fixing it because you ignore the problems in the first place. The same way that your body gives you signs of, of illnesses or disease, but you choose to ignore it. You choose to ignore it. And then the universe punishes you in a harder way. So you realize it. Please don't be that person. Please don't be that person that carries on losing money and your lessons have to get harder and harder because your stubborn self doesn't realize how to fix them and you're not actually putting the ego aside and thinking, right, let me actually listen to what he'd be saying here. Let me listen to what these guys are saying and maybe my trading can improve. Pay the price now so you don't pay it later, is my advice. So once you've assessed these thoughts and they appear again, you know they're expensive. You know from a probabilistic standpoint, they're gonna cost you money and pain as well. All you've gotta do is hedge against them because now you've got the tangible, the intangible into the tangible, sorry. That's how your brain processes information, by emotion. If you leave your thoughts intangible, you're never gonna change them. You need to make the intangible tangible and physically change it. Physically see, right, these cost me money. Next time I'm having these thoughts when I'm looking at a trade that fits the plan great, but I know I shouldn't take it because of its risk level. And my biases, my beliefs, my programming isn't pulling me into the market to take a trade because I know this is gonna lose me money. Once you experience that three to four, five times, your brain now builds new neurocircuitry around that and it doesn't want you to experience the same situation again. And just as it's hard for you guys now to not do these negative things, it'll be almost impossible for you after you've trained yourself correctly to do these negative things. And that's the goal. That's where you wanna be. You know enough of what you need to know for most of you. You've got a solid trading plan, but for some reason you can't effectively apply it in the markets under different forms of pressure and pressure is synonymous for trading larger amounts of capital. It's a muscle, you gotta train it guys. So hopefully this video helped you. I know it did for a fact, actually. Let me know down below after two to three months if your trading's got worse, and I guarantee it hasn't. Case closed.